All right, man, peace. You know, there was recently revealed in the news some information pertaining to, quote unquote, Dr. Martin Luther King. Some information that has corroborated certain statements that I've made for the longest time on this channel. And once again, brothers, like I tell y'all, I don't make videos to lie to you. I make videos to make sure that you're informed. This is the point of this channel. I've told you brothers this for the longest time. My channel is geared towards the so-called black man because the black man is the recipient of the most lies. Okay? They set up idols like Martin Luther King to deceive you. That's why they set people like him up. His role was to help bring everyone together for the globalist agenda. Okay? Once again, he was a communist. He did not believe in the scriptures at all. The whole minister ruse that was a front to provide him with legitimacy to get black people to believe in him. As I've told you guys before, the civil rights movement was a was a red herring. It was a form of a of a Trojan horse mechanism to to aid the overall global agenda to bring blacks into the fold. That was the only way that they were going to be able to get it done. They had to utilize the Hegelian dialectic and they needed somebody who was a very astute and adroit speaker, great orator, to help deceive the people and bring them in, reel them in. The perfect person was Martin Luther King. But in real life, Martin Luther King was not anything like what he was cracked up to be. Uh, do I believe that he had decent motivations? I believe that, you know, in his heart of hearts, he wanted to be a part of, of, of a movement that he felt like could liberate the people. But I, I, I believe that his form of liberation was based in enlightenment thinking. What was known in the 1700s as being a libertine. Right? L-I-B-E-R-T-I-N-E. -E. Uh, the libertines, and it's not to digress, but they were a group of, of bourgeoisie who believed in sexual freedom. A.K.A. the worship of Bacchus, pansexuality. This was an offshoot of the Enlightenment thinkers. Martin Luther King, real name Michael King, was an Enlightenment thinker. And, you know, he was also Machiavellian, meaning what? The ends justify the means. If he had to put forth a fake image of being a pastor or a preacher to get you as a so-called black male or black female to believe in him so that he could bring you into his true ideology, that's what he was going to do. So basically, to sum it up, Martin Luther King was like a double agent. He worked for the U.S. government and he worked for the uh, communist interests. He just didn't understand that. So when they were done with him, they blew him away. That's all. And they're going to reveal him in full very soon. But you know what? Let's let them talk about this issue. And of course, I'm going to chime in. There's breaking news tonight coming from the National Archives and another batch of JFK assassination files. They include, though, an explosive FBI dossier, not on JFK, but on Dr. Martin Luther King, the Reverend Martin Luther King. And let me say this. You know, a lot of brothers are acting like, like this is such shocking information. This information is not really revelatory. It's only revelatory to the masses of people who have been inundated with this image of Martin Luther King as this angelic figure who was, you know, who, who strove to bring everybody together. People who've done any research on any real research on Martin Luther King, they know all these things already. They know that the man slept with, you know, every, you know, every piece of pussy that crossed his path. The information that they're bringing out, once again, this is incidental information that it's almost like a piece of paper that was caught inside of a book that you pulled off the shelf. Remember, the only reason why they're revealing this is because this information is part and parcel of the data that they're revealing or that they've or that they're bringing to light about JFK. Why is that? Because they lived in the same era. Remember the time period known as Camelot, which was John F. Kennedy's time period in the White House, that also corresponded with Martin Luther King and the so-called quote-unquote civil rights movement, which was really just the black communist movement. That's all it was. Now the real information on Martin Luther King, they're not going to release until 2027 under the Freedom of Information Act. The FBI has, uh, if I remember correctly, 845 pages of confidential information on Martin Luther King um, through the surveillance that they, uh, through the surveillance that they, that they practice on him from the late 50s all the way until 1968. 
okay? And that information is labeled obscene. Capital O-B-S-C-E-N-E. And I am not using hyperbole. I'm being straightforward with you. The information that they have not brought out on Martin Luther King, that those 845 pages of confidential information is labeled obscene. So the information that they're bringing out right now on him is only the tip of the iceberg. They want to depict him as a family man. He was nothing of the sort. I guarantee you that man has children all throughout America from both black and white women. If you understand how he got down. Okay. Dr. King Jr. reflects then director J. Edgar Hoover's deep suspicion and obsession with Dr. King, which was certainly no secret at the time. And it speaks to just. Uh, see, they're trying to they're trying to change this into a J. Edgar Hoover issue instead of concentrating on, on Martin Luther King. Why is that? Because once again, the Caucasian liberals have a lot invested in the image of Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King is a trigger that they use to control American blacks. Remember, remember, whenever American blacks start to get out of control, they bring up Martin Luther King. Because they, that's how they rein you in. You got to be more like Dr. King. You have to follow his message. All right. You have to want to be with me. You have to want to hold my hand. Once again, Martin Luther King was a pawn of the globalists. They utilize him to bring you black people into the fold of globalism, a.k.a. Luciferianism. The economic system of Luciferianism is communism. So I hope that you guys are starting to understand why I say the things that I say about the topics that I say it about. It's to give you a little bit better understanding of why these things occur, not just what occurs, but why it occurs. And then you'll be able to see things a little bit more clearly. How far he and the FBI went to try and discredit Dr. King. The dossier released today contains items that are both, and I say explosive, but they are unsubstantiated. Seen as Gary Tuckman. Bullshit. Bullshit. Everybody who's in the know knows that uh, that information that the FBI has due to their surveillance has been substantiated. And, you know, the Caucasian liberals, they like to play this game when information starts to come out on people that that they need to use as as uh, as pawns or control mechanisms. They like to they like to cast doubt on the information. Uh, all you have to do is ask the people who rolled with him, Ralph Abernathy and Andrew Young, people of people of that sort who rolled with him. And they'll tell you about Martin Luther King. All right. They'll tell you they'll tell you how he operated and, and what he did. OK, the SCLC, all that was was a big fuck fest. That's all that was the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. That was just a, a socialist communist front for, you know, Martin Luther King and his crew getting as much pussy as possible. And look, and don't get it twisted. Pussy is a beautiful thing. But when you're just using your business front to try to pull in and dupe as many of these silly women as you can, really in the veneration and the worship of, of Bacchus, then that's when the wickedness comes in. All right. You deal with the woman in proper order. Not with, not, not with you turn to your right, Rob Abernathy poking this bitch. You turn to your left, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jesse Jackson poking that bitch. Then you look in front of you, B.R. Rustin getting his asshole eaten out by, by another man. And you just sitting there chilling with two chicks between your legs. That's the type of stuff that was going on. All right. Allegedly. OK. Just to let you just to let you guys know, this is why the information on Martin, on Martin Luther King is labeled obscene. All right. And his whole family was all jacked up. But I'm going to go into that as this video goes along. Joins us now with more. So what are you learning? What's in this stuff? Well, Anderson, among the more than 600 documents released late today by the National Archives is this one, a never-before-seen file titled Martin Luther King Jr., A Current Analysis. It's dated March 12, 1968, and includes a number of explosive allegations about the civil rights leader who was assassinated 23 days after this report was first compiled. Among the... Well, the reason why he was assassinated 23 days after the report was compiled, they already knew what was going on. They were fully aware of the threat on Martin Luther King's life. They probably were involved in, in that whole conspiracy, quote unquote. It wouldn't shock me at all. All right. As a matter of fact, his family is on record as stating that they don't believe that James Earl Ray killed Martin Luther King, and neither am I. All right. James Earl Ray was nothing but a pawn and a patsy. Uh, that's why when they, quote unquote, caught James Earl Ray 
over there in London, England. They didn't even put him on trial. They just found him guilty and sentenced him to 99 years. The man was never allowed to give a deposition. He was never allowed to speak up for himself. So that whole thing was nothing but a bunch of bullshit. Okay? And as I've stated to you brothers previously, that was a hit on Martin Luther King. Everybody there knew about it. Or I should say, the guys that did not have ties on. If you Google a picture of Martin Luther King on the, on the balcony, everybody there who did not wear a tie, they knew it was about to go down. The people who had on ties, they didn't know. Okay? So Jesse Jackson knew what was about to go down. Claims detailed Martin Luther King Jr. was involved in extramarital affairs and other sexual activities that, if true and real publicly, would have been devastating to Dr. King and his movement. In addition, there are pages and pages detailing Martin Luther King and his organization, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, with alleged ties to known communists. And finally, details about... Hey, haven't I been telling y'all brothers that for the longest time? Bayard Rustin was a known communist, man. Stanley Levinson, the Caucasian Jewish lawyer who was puppeting Martin Luther King, known communist, had communist ties. Okay? Stanley Levinson was directly linked to a, um, uh, to a KGB agent named Lesiovsky. I'm trying to remember exactly what his name was. His name was Lesiovsky. And Stanley Levinson also was a heavy contributor to the quote unquote I have a dream speech. He also was the one, him and Bear Rustin are also the people who uh were involved in the in the compilation of a lot of the information that went into Martin Luther King's official biography. Alright, so his whole image was crafted. Posed financial improprieties by Dr. King and the SCLC. Now, I want to stress that the FBI, under Director J. Edgar Hoover at the time, had been investigating Martin Luther King Jr. for years at this point in the hopes of finding damaging information and that we have no way of corroborating these allegations. So what does this have to do with the investigation? Well, since when does the FBI spend all these years attaining information through surveillance and you're going, to tr you're going to try to nullify their findings by saying, well, we can't really corroborate their findings. So then what, so then what the fuck are you really saying about the FBI? So it's, it's okay for you to say that we can't really go by what they're saying because we can't corroborate it. But it's okay for you to jump on uh, James Comey and whoever the director of the FBI is now because they're doing a witch hunt on, uh, on Donald Trump. So which one is it? Do you trust the FBI or not? the assassination of JFK, because I don't quite get why this document would have been in there with that. Exactly. That's one of the many questions. Good question. Maybe somebody snuck that in there on purpose to, uh, to give you guys something else to talk about because people want that information to come out. There are a lot of people, like I said, who are in the know on Martin Luther King and who know a lot about him and who are tired of that image. Or maybe it's just a little prep for what they have planned for 2027 when they release all the information that they have on him. All right. That's assuming that this once again, that's assuming that this society is still around <laughs> in 10 years. You never know what the, what the hell is going to happen out here. But Martin Luther King, man, his whole family was messed up. His, you know, his father's true name or real name was was Michael King. And uh, Martin Luther King was born, I believe, in 1929. His name also was Michael King. And Martin Luther King decided that he was going to change him and his son's name to, Mar to Martin Luther King in... Um, in commemoration of the quote-unquote great reformer, Martin Luther. Uh, for those of you brothers who don't know, Martin Luther was the, uh, he was the monk who initiated the reformation of the Catholic Church in the 1500s. Uh, he wrote a document known as the 95 Theses to, you know, systematically tear down the Catholic Church doctrine. All right, but that's another issue, another topic for another day, because that is directly linked to the fall of the of the black rulership in Europe. I've already mentioned that. That's another topic for another day. Point being is that Martin Luther King's father, Martin Luther King Sr., changed his name, and he was directly associated with the NAACP. All right, in in um, in Georgia. Now Martin Luther King's mother, uh, I believe, I believe his sister's name was Alberta Williams. She went to Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, for those of you who don't know, Spelman College gets its name from a white woman named Laura Spelman. For those of you who don't know, Laura Spelman was the wife 
of John D. Rockefeller. All right. So the Rockefeller Foundation is the is the institution that funds a lot of these so-called, quote unquote, high level black colleges and institutions in the United States. Uh, there were two Caucasian women who founded the uh, who founded what the institution that would become known as Spelman College. I can't remember their names, but they met up with John D. Rockefeller in I believe it was in, in Ohio because that's where he's from, as well as the Bushes, Samuel Bush is also from Ohio, but they met up, two white women, they met up with uh, John D. Rockefeller because they were looking for funding for their school. Anyway, he listened to them and he liked what they were saying about what they had planned for the students in the school. And that's how he funded them and that's, that's how they survived to this day. That's how the college got his name, Spelman College, from John D. Rockefeller's wife, Laura Spellman. All right, so Martin Luther King's mother came out of that institution and married uh, Martin Luther King Sr. Now, Martin Luther King's mother, Al Alberta Williams, her father was, uh, he was the head of the Ebenezer Baptist Church, and he handed over the reins of the Ebenezer Baptist Church to Martin Luther King Sr. Now, Martin Luther King Jr. was extremely bright, and he ended up going to... Um, he ended up going to college at 15. I'm trying to remember what college he went to. But he anyway, he goes to college at 15 years old. And, and he had a crew of dudes that he called the Wreckers. And he called the W-R-E-C-K-E-R-S, the Wreckers. You know, like the Wrecking Crew. And the reason why he called his crew the Wreckers is because he said we wreck girls. All the girls we see, we wrecking them. All right? So, <laughs> you know, Martin Luther King seemed like the type of dude who, you know, he was just into banging broads. And I mean, that if that's his thing, that's his thing. But when you bring that and you cross that over into trying to be a a a leader for for your people, now that's that's not was that's not was you no know, was good because that's going to bring all type of confusion. And now when you have that demon on you, that sexual addiction demon, because sex is beautiful, it's great, but you have to keep it in its proper order, proper place. When you have that demon, that follows that flows into. The rights of the Bacchus, which is what he got into because, once again, he was a libertine. Because when you combine that demon with uh, the love of chaos, like he had, because he did not believe in the scriptures at all, all right? He denied the existence of Christ. He did not believe in the Bible. He thought it was a book of myths, which a lot of so called black men today believe, which is the reason why the so called black man is in the condition that he's in. Um, that led to him being. A perfect target to be a pawn okay but he wanted to use the um, he wanted to use the ministry as a mechanism to help him be put in a position where he could bring about reform for his people because he was a huge fan of Mahatma Gandhi for those of you who don't know by the way Mahatma Gandhi I may have mentioned this before he was an agent of the M of the British uh, intelligence MI5 Okay. We have tonight, Anderson, considering the document has no mention of John F. Kennedy or his assassination, the only clue we have in this file marked secret is it's also stamped, reviewed by the FBI JFK Task Force and dated May 8th, 1994, meaning it was reviewed by the archives JFK Task Force 23 years ago, but kept secret until today. There are still thousands... Yeah, because clearly they want that information to come out. That's why they snuck that in there. I mean, why would that be in there unless people just, you know, they're like, you know what, if you're going to bring out information on JFK, then we're going to bring out information on this, this watermelon head bastard, Martin Luther King. All right? That's, that's why they're doing it. Uh, and, uh, and once again, just to touch on something that I, that I mentioned, the reason why I bring up Gandhi is because Gandhi was a huge influence on the civil rights movement. Uh, Bayard Rustin the pansexual who was the right hand man of Martin Luther King and who, you know, was really instrumental in guiding him on certain processes and practices that they would use in the civil rights movement, such as nonviolence, because he learned that from Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, he, Bear Rustin would go over to India and just learn at the feet of Mahatma Gandhi. Once again, Mahatma Gandhi was a, uh, an agent of the British intelligence MI5. All right. 
he actually failed out of college. He failed out of school, but somehow he got the funding to go to Britain and study at the um, what's the name of that? What's the name of the of the uh, law institution there? I believe it's the ends of the court. Anyway, he goes there to be to study to be a barrister. And he actually was funded by the Lord of Kandahar. All right. Who was a uh, a British military official during that time period. And then he was sent back over there to India to, you know, to make sure that the people stayed subdued because the people in India were trying to were, were trying to rise up. They had they had uh, engaged in something called the Sepoy Rebellion, the Sepoy Rebellion prior to that. And they needed somebody who could keep the people calm. OK, now, Mahatma Gandhi also uh, was an adherent to something called uh, theosophy under Madame Blavatsky. I've mentioned this before. Now, that's a whole other topic. I don't want to digress too much into that, though. JFK assassination documents that, that have not been released, right? Right. And that's also still unclear what's going on with that. We do know that last week President Trump sent out this tweet that read in part, after strict consultation with General Kelly, the CIA, and other agencies, I will be releasing all JFK files other than the names and addresses of any person who is still living. Right, and somehow that, that page on Martin, Luther, on Martin Luther King got slipped in there. So, who knows, did Trump, was Trump the one who said, slipped that Martin Luther King page in there? But either way, it's good, because that was a way for the Most High to bring attention to brothers. Uh, what I've been telling them already. OK, but when, whenever you're dealing with characters like Martin Luther King, people who are able to ascend to such a high level of public appeal, the rabbit hole is very deep. The more famous a person is, meaning the higher they, they are elevated, the deeper the rabbit hole, because all these people, they always have sponsors and funding, whether it's Gandhi with, uh, with Lord Roberts of Kandahar, um, or whether it's Martin Luther King with uh, Stanley Levinson or or uh, uh, Bayard Rustin or A. Philip Randolph, whoever you want to name. They always have backing. They always have a puppet master because that that that's the point. You know, if you're not being directed, then what, what point is it to have you being used as a pawn? The people on television talking are never the ones who are in control. Their job is just to act as a representative of certain interests. That's it. And they are being released on a rolling basis by the National Archives. There are still thousands of pages yet to be released, so much more to come. And I mentioned this also uh, a long time ago. Even in, Martin Luther King really wanted to get with a white woman. All right, There was a Caucasian woman that he met at Boston University that he wasn't able to marry because of the time period. It wasn't time for that yet. So he had to settle for Coretta Scott King. All right? So... Uh, around 1952, you had a man, you had a man named uh, Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall was associated with the NAACP. He was able to get involved and and help find documentation that was in, that was integral to get you know to to win the case known as Brown versus the Board of Education, which would push integration of the schools. And it was able to um, basically decertify the the, uh, the the findings of Plessy versus Ferguson in 1896. Um, that's if, if that's if I remember correctly. All right. If you brothers look all that look all everything up that I'm telling you, and if I'm making any errors, brothers, please correct me. All right. So if I remember correctly, it's Plessy versus Ferguson in 1896, and you had the Brown versus Board of Education in 1954 which Thurgood Marshall played a heavy role in. He also was eventually put on the Supreme Court later on. But 1954, you had the Brown versus Board of Education. 1955, you had the Montgomery, uh, the Montgomery bus boycott. All right. And then 1956 or 57, you had the founding of the of the SCLC. All right. Which is how Martin Luther King started to rise to fame. So after that, he systematically began to rise up and up and up with the aid of A. Philip Randolph and Bayard Rustin. They planned the, the March on Washington in 1963, in which they were going to use the, uh, the speech, the I Have a Dream speech that was crafted by Stanley Levinson, once again, a, a Caucasian Jew communist lawyer who himself was reporting to a KGB operative 
named uh, Lesiovsky, L-E-S-S-I-O-V-S-K-Y. Uh, this guy, Lesiovsky, he was a KGB operative who also had a high position with the United Nations. Okay, so he was reporting directly to the Soviet Union. So this is why um, my man, uh, what's my man named J. Edgar Hoover? I'm sorry, brothers. A lot, a lot of this information I've gone over over years, and sometimes it's, it's difficult for me to recollect. But this is why J. Edgar Hoover stayed on Martin Luther King so hard because he knew that he was a communist. He was, a, he was, you know, he was a pawn of many different factions. And as I've stated previously, Martin Luther King in, attended a school known as the Highlander Folk School. Him, Ralph Abernathy, and that lesbian, Rosa Parks, who they used. She was none but a secretary at the SCLC. It was really a young sister named Claudette Colvin who uh, resisted getting up out of her seat on the bus. But they knew that they really couldn't use her because she was a 14-year-old girl who was pregnant. So they, they decided to use Rosa Parks. I told you, everybody involved with the SCLC is a degenerate, right? The SCLC was like the Black Lives Matter movement of its day. Everybody was either pansexual or lesbian or something like that. Just on TV trying to act like they're not. At least today, the Black Lives Matter, will, they, they'll directly tell you that, that they're all lesbians and faggots. Back then, they tried to hide it. Okay? But yeah, you know, all that stuff was contrived. All right? But uh, yeah, uh, Stanley Levinson, he, he crafted... All right, so now this is a good article that I found on Martin Luther King in regards to this issue. Let me see here. It says, a secret FBI dossier on civil rights leader Martin Luther King alleges that he had a string of affairs and other sexual aberrations. Hmm. Now, brothers, once again, I told you guys a long time ago this guy was a pansexual. People came in the comments. They said, oh, well, I've heard that he had a lot of women, but I never heard that. What do you see? <laughs> what is a sexual aberration? Hmm? Notice they, they make a distinction between his affairs and sexual aberrations. What is that? That means that he was experimenting with other things. OK, I told you guys that he was dealing with pederasty. He was also dealing with homosexuality. I told you brothers that. OK, this is why they're trying to come out and say, well, a lot of it has not been substantiated. Look. I've done my research on it for a very long time. I already know what the deal is. What they're trying to do is they're trying to hold off this type of information because they don't feel like people are ready for it yet. If American society fully embraced pansexuality, then they would reveal everything on Martin, on Martin Luther King. This guy, Martin Luther King, I, I mentioned this before. When this guy went to go get his Nobel Peace Prize over there in Norway, this motherfucker was butt naked chasing a, a, a white woman down the hallway. Okay. When he went to go get his Nobel Peace Prize in, in 1964, the, the police caught him butt ass naked chasing down a woman uh, <laughs> butt naked in the damn hallway. All right. I guess he wanted to show her that he was free at last. I don't know. The file was released in a tranche of documents relating to the assassination of John F. Kennedy released on Friday. Mr. Kennedy is not referencing the file. Of course not, because they slipped this this document in there. To throw people off and just reveal this man because they're tired of this man hiding. Let me see here. Let's see what's, what's relevant. One allegation that King had a mistress in California to, with, whom he followed, with whom he fathered a child was attributed to a very responsible Los Angeles individual in a position to know. Among its other accusations are that Dr. King was surrounded by advisors with strong links to the Communist Party USA. Of course, all of his people were associated with the Communist Party USA, brothers. All of them. All right. Baird Rustin, Ralph Abernathy. Ralph Abernathy visited East Germany back w before they tore down the Berlin Wall and said, you guys are getting it right over here. All right. We need to get it right over in America. Oh, and that's what I that's what I was talking about. That slipped my mind. Like I was saying. Martin Luther King and Ralph Abernathy and Rosa Parks, that lesbian. And before she, you know, she was married to a white man, then, then she turned lesbian. But anyway, they went to the Highlander Folk School over there in Tennessee. And you guys could Google a picture of them sitting in the Highlander Folk School. It was founded by two Caucasians named Miles Horton 
and James Dombrowski. You brothers could look those names up. Those men were closely affiliated with Martin Luther King, as well as two other Caucasians, a married couple named Carl and Ann Braden. All right, Carl Braden, it's spelled, spelled Carl with a C. Ann Braden is Ann with no E at the end. Braden, last name, B as in boy, R-A-D-E-N. All right. Uh, they were heavily involved in Hegelian dialectic tactics. Um, they, bought, they bought a house for a black family in a white part of or in a white neighborhood in Louisville, Kentucky. Right. So they bought the house for the black family and then they blew up the house and tried to make it look like White people in Louisville blew up the house to try to show that racism and, and terroristic racial practices were going on in Louisville. These are the type of things and stunts that they pull to try to force integration, quote unquote integration. Why is that? Because when, it, when, you're, when you're trying to promote communism, you want to break down culture. Because when you break down culture, then it's easier for people to look towards the government for leadership and for inspiration. OK, that's what it's all about. But everybody in his crew, they were all communists, man. All right. His statements were always subject to approval by the alleged communist sympathizers. And yes, they were. Before he made any official statements, uh, Martin Luther King had to run everything by Bayard Rustin and Stanley Levinson. Everything. OK, everything. And that's how it's always been. But like I said before, the rabbit hole is always deep when you're dealing with when you're dealing with these issues. Like I mentioned, the Brown versus Board of Education ruling, the head judge on that ruling was a man named Earl Warren. For those of you who don't know, you brothers can look him up. Earl Warren was declared the head of the Masons in California back in 19. I believe it was 1935. He also was the was the judge who was put in charge of the Warren Commission after John F. Kennedy was killed. I told you, brothers, that the reason why they wanted to have Lyndon Baines Johnson as John F. Kennedy's vice president was because they wanted to make sure that if John F. Kennedy went off and he could not be properly controlled, that they would have a company man that they could replace him with. OK, so this is why when John F. Kennedy goes and he, um, you know, he wants to bring back the gold and silver standard and he starts to mess with the money of a lot of the big wigs in America. They get rid of him and they replace him with, with Lyndon Baines Johnson. And what does Lyndon Baines Johnson do? He brings in the, the reforms known as the Great Society. And he also is the one who signed, you know, who, who assists Martin Luther King in the ratification of most of the civil rights bills. You see that? So that's what's known as the Hegelian dialectic pressure from above and pressure from beneath. When they no longer needed Martin Luther King, what did they do? They just bumped them off. That was it. That's how they operate. All right. But anyway, he was a secret supporter of communism, a wholehearted Marxist. Well, I could have told you. I've been telling you that for months. His organization, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, set up a tax dodge to raise funds for its for its activities. The C, the SCLC. And also another organization they had, the SCEF, I believe it's that's the Southern, I believe it's the Southern Christian Education Fund. Those were all communist fronts, brothers. All right, they set up those fronts so that they can get charity donations from their uh, from their donors, from their sponsors, which are which are always Rockefeller based. Okay, they got they got funding from a lot of high level oil and banking institutions because once again. The system of government that the international bankers prefer is communism. Period. All right. And, you know, of course, who who was one of the main people who who uh, streamlined communism? Karl Marx. Karl Marx's teacher. Oh, and, and before I forget, I'm glad this hopped back in my mind. As I told you, brothers, um, or I, I'm, I may have mentioned it in this video. Uh, Martin Luther King was a big fan of George Hegel who was a German philosopher in the, in the late 1700s, early 1800s. He is the father of what's known as the Hegelian dialectic. Okay. George Hegel, last name H-E-G-E-L. Now, George Hegel had a student by the name of Bruno Bauer. And for those of you who don't know who Bruno Bauer is, he's the man who 
um, concocted the uh, this 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 nonsensical theory about the Pizzo family in ancient Rome creating the New Testament. I had some guy in the comments, you know, I don't want to call him no names, but, you know, some guy in the comments a while ago who got mad about something that I said about Kaepernick. And he started talking about, I want to debate you on the 12 tribe sign. And I want to debate you on, on the New Testament because the New Testament was made up by, Piz by Pizzo. That shit come from Bruno Bauer. Right. I mentioned this in a video that I did on on um on the transgender thing. One of the transgender videos I did. And I mentioned that most of the philosophies that we adhere to today in Western society are predicated off of off of um philosophies that were created in the mid to late eighteen hundreds in Germany. All right. The German thinkers are viewed as the brain trust of Western society. They're the ones who promoted things like sexology and, and um, psychiatry, things of that nature that affect how people think and why they think what they think. But anyway, back to the point. Uh, Hegel had a student who, who, Hegel who invented the Hegelian dialectic, which is just as above, so below, just, just Luciferian principles. He had a student named Bruno Bauer who came up with the uh, the Pizzo family wrote the New Testament, that bullshit, because he wanted to get rid of the Bible. The point of Enlightenment thinking is to get rid of the scriptures. Now, Bruno Bauer had a couple of students by the name of Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. Now, when he saw what they were developing, which, which came to be known as Marxism, he felt like they were going too far and he disavowed himself of them. But point being, they are his students. Now, when you have a guy like Martin Luther King come along, who... Is, a, is an adherent to uh, George, to, pardon me, to, uh, to George Hegel, and also was a big fan of Henry David Thoreau. For those of you who don't know, he was another, uh, he was another writer of the 1800s who was heavily into uh, reform and things of that nature. This is where you get the brain of a Martin Luther King. This is the person that our people adhere to, a person who follows numerous philosophies from various Caucasian thinkers and thinks that he, he that he was going to be able to repackage those ideologies into a way that was going to help so-called black people. And when he realized that that philosophy only goes so far, there's only so much that you could think about thoughts, <laughs> think about why you think what you think. When he realized that, then he got depressed. And that's what happened with Martin Luther King at the end of his life. He became very depressed. And, he, and that's why he leaned on sexual intercourse with random women he started to lean on uh, marijuana. He also started to lean on alcohol. Now, just to wrap this up a little bit, but let me, know, let me read this. Let me read down. Oh, Dr. King took part in drunken sex orgies. Yes, the Bacchanalian rites. Brothers, let me, let me tell you something. Man. I told you this a long time ago. You're going to find out the things I tell y'all are rock solid, man. All right? You're going to find out the things that I tell y'all are rock solid. And, and by the way, Henry David Thoreau, before this gets to my mind, he wrote an essay on civil disobedience. Okay? Once again, he was one of Dr. King's, um, he was one of the, the guys who inspired Dr. Martin Luther King. Alright? But once again, these guys, were, these guys were worshiping the Bacchus. He had love affairs with at least four women. Please, that motherfucker had love affairs with at least four women a night. Including folk singer Joan Baez. Brothers, all these women, most of these women ain't nothing but a bunch of groupies. Alright? Like when I did that video on the Saudi Arabian women being allowed to drive. Uh, like I said, the only reason why they want to drive somewhere is because they want to drive to the next, to the next, <laughs> to the next sheikh's house. They want to go to see who got the nicer camel. Right? The woman is not that hard to figure out. But anyway. The list of alleged indiscretions would likely have been deeply problematic for the civil rights leader if it had been made public in 1968. Well, it wasn't going to be made public. They were just compiling information in case they needed to use it. Like I said, every public figure has a file. Like this jackass LeBron James who wanted to go back and forth with Donald Trump. They got a file on his ass too. And if, and if they need to, they'll open that file. That's all. The paper paints Dr. King in an extremely negative light despite his receipt of the Nobel Peace Prize and his contribution to passing the Civil Rights Act four years previously. 
It is not entirely clear why the dossier was commissioned, but several pages of the 20-page document are concerned with Mr. King's upcoming Washington Spring project. Oh, let me also say this before I forget. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover, he did have Martin Luther King under intense surveillance, but he was only able to do it after Robert F. Kennedy gave him permission. Now, when Martin Luther King came to the White House, I'm trying to remember what year it was, 62 or 63, he was walking in the garden, I believe in the Rose Garden, I believe that's what it's called, with JFK. And JFK looked at him and told him, he said, look, a lot of your top aides are communists. And Martin Luther King acted like he was heeding the warning. But to me, in reality, JFK was telling him, look, we know you're a communist. So you better, you know, you better get your shit straight before we have to do certain things. That, I think JFK was telling them, a lot of your top aides are communists because that was his way of indirectly saying, look, we know that you're a communist. So you better straighten up and fly right. Of course, Martin Luther King acted like he was paying attention, but he wasn't because he was hard headed. Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis said that she met Dr. Martin Luther King and she didn't like him at all. Probably because she could see the demons in his eyes when, when he looked at her. All right. Once again, a man can have a wife. He can have concubines. But when you're running around and you want to poke everything moving... That's a demon. That's that's a demon of Bacchus. Like I said in the in one of the videos that I did on in, on the on uh, Insecure, the TV show Insecure, a lot of times when people want are attracted to so-called black people, they want to sleep with everybody black. That's not that's 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 dealing with demons. Okay, but a man can have a wife and he can have a multiple wives as long as it's in order. All right. And you understand that if you have concubines, there's a way that you treat the concubine, there's a way that you treat the wife, there's a way that you treat the wives, plural. But it's all depending on your ability to handle the situation. Martin Luther King was sleeping with other people's wives. He was, he was having orgies and pansexuality. All right? So that's the difference. But anyway. It warned that despite Dr. King's history of calling for peaceful protests, the combined forces of the communist influence and the black nationalists advocating violence give the Washington Spring Project a potential for an extremely explosive situation. Dr. King was killed before the planned march. Yeah, probably because they were done with him and they were tired of him talking shit. He was trying to move on into protest in the Vietnam War, which would be him fucking with their money. He also was uh, doing things in regards to the uh, sanitation workers. They were done with him. They already were able to pass the Civil Rights Act, which would allow the, uh, the Negroes, quote unquote, to be fully engrafted into mainstream society and therefore to be easier to program with, along with everybody else. So they were done with him. A slow thinker with abnormal sexual preferences. Hmm. Damn. I'm glad I found this article. What I, didn't I tell you, brothers, the man was a pansexual? Didn't I tell y'all that shit? I don't make videos just to make, I tell you, I, I make videos to inform you brothers, man. <laughs> and once again, they have 845 pages of info on this man. Okay, that, they, that are labeled obscene. They just happen to slip this little 20 page shit in there. Despite Dr. King's historical reputation as a skilled speaker, the FBI file claimed that other advisors approved everything Mr. King said. King is such a slow thinker. He is not. He is usually not prepared to make statements without help from someone. It reads, of course, because everything has to be prepared for you when you're a pawn. Everything has to be prepared for you when you're a pawn. Linking Dr. King to communism, it claimed King is a wholehearted Marxist who has studied it believes in it and agrees with it, but because of his being a minister of religion, does not dare to espouse it publicly. Hmm. And another part says, during the early 1960s, the CPUSA, that stands for the Communist Party of the United States of America, was striving to obtain a Negro labor coalition to achieve its goals in this country. Martin Luther King Jr. and his organization were made to, were made to order to achieve these objectives. Once again, I told you, brothers, the whole civil rights movement was communist based. I've been telling you all that for months and months and months and months. Now, the white man finally revealed his file saying it. So I guess y'all going to believe me now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the 
The most salacious claims about Dr. King's sex life are contained in a dense collection of rumors in the final two pages. Hmm. Let me see here. Let me read this. An all-night sex orgy was held with these prostitutes and some of the delegates in attendance. One room had a large table in it which was filled with whiskey. The two Negro prostitutes were paid $50 to put on a sex show for the entertainment of guests. A variety of sex acts deviating from the normal were observed. Previous sexual experiences. This activity is not, is not new to King and his associates. As early as January 1964, King engaged in another two-day drunken sex orgy in Washington, D.C. Many of those present engaged in sexual acts, natural as well as unnatural. What does that mean, brothers? When it says natural, when you say natural, that means penis and vagina. So unnatural is talking about what? Talking about anal sex, talking about homosexuality, things like that. At lesbianism. But anyway. For the entertainment of onlookers. When one of the females. When one of the females shied away from engaging in an unnatural act. King and other of the, of the males present discussed how she was to be taught and initiated in this respect. So Martin the King laid down his pimp game. He's like, look, bitch. <laughs> We ain't give you fifty dollars for you to sit here and look pretty, all right? You better go for what you know. You no, know. <laughs> shit. Let me find out. Doctor King was like was more like Doctor Luke. <laughs> pop, pop, get it, get it. Anyway, throughout the un throughout the ensuing years and until this date, King has continued to carry on his sexual aberrations secretly while holding himself out to public view. As a moral leader of religious conviction. At a February 1968 workshop to train ministers in urban leadership, it is alleged one Negro minister in attendance later expressed his disgust with the behind the scene drinking, fornication and homosexuality that went on at the conference. Hmm. Several Negro and white prostitutes were Brought in from the Miami area, an all-night sex orgy was held with these prostitutes and some of the delegates. The document alleged that Dr. King also engaged in a two-way, an pardon me, probably two-way also, but two-day drunken sex orgy in Washington in January 1964. Oh, I already read this. It is a fact that King not only regularly indulges in adulterous acts, but enjoys the abnormal by engaging in group sexual orgies. Hmm. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so let me say this also. There was an FBI undercover agent named Julia Brown who happened to be an older black female who made some allegations about Martin Luther King because she was used to infiltrate a lot of the communist organizations that were working with the civil rights movement. So let's see what she alleges. Well, I say it is frightening and it should be frightened uh, to the entire American people that he has demanded ten billion dollars and if he doesn't get it then there may be riots this summer Martin Luther King is nothing but a blackmailer and he should be arrested for blackmailing because he certainly has blackmailed the United States government there's one thing that bothers me that may be why they killed his ass the man might have got too big for his britches and said, look, if you don't give me 10 billion, motherfucker, let me find out, <laughs> Dr. King. Well, well first, I, first, I think he might be Dr. Luke. Now I'm saying may, maybe this dude is, is Dr. Evil. Motherfucker said, I need $10 billion. <laughs> and that, uh, as a Negro yourself, why do you talk so bitterly again of Martin Luther King and uh, a lot of these, uh, these other uh, people of your race? Well, let me tell you something. I 
I don't put my race before I do my country. Uh, being a Negro woman doesn't matter to me who is a Negro or who is a white person. If they are enemies of our country, then they are certainly my enemies too. <laughs> As you can see, she was the perfect tool to use to infiltrate these different organizations because uh, you know, she clearly was a quote unquote patriot, which is, you know, all the COINTELPRO operatives, they think just like that. All right. But point being is that's the information. That's part of the information that she alleged about Martin Luther King. Her name is Julia Brown. She was a FBI informant who uh, infiltrated many of these civil rights organizations back in back in the early really the late 50s into into the 60s but she stated that Martin Luther King tried to extort 10 billion dollars out of the US government how true that is I don't know I'm sure but I'm pretty sure that it is true because she would have to have documentation to make a statement like that or the FBI couldn't use her all right all right now this is going to be the same woman Julia Brown she's going to um provide some edification on the tactics that many of these communist groups believe in using and it's going to prove certain things that I've stated in the past about many of these riots like the Detroit riot I did a video on the Detroit riot and the Newark riots and I stated that the people who started those riots were uh, were communist pawns who were sent out to try to you know push a lot of so-called black people into rioting because once you riot then they can bring in they can bring in uh, m um, many more militaristic reforms like just like you see out here in new york we you know with this guy driving down killing eight people now they have an excuse to uh turn the southern part of new york city into a militarized zone okay so that's why they do that when they when they want to pass a certain reform and they want to justify it then they'll engage in, in um, different strategies or hijinks like that or you have the guys running around out here shooting everybody that's because they want to disarm the people so that if they need to, they can, you know, they can put people into the concentration camps or the, or the detainment centers. But anyway, let's see what Julia Brown has to say. Well, I, I just think uh, it was the same type of uh, uh, commission that uh, the president selected when he selected the commission for the death of uh, President Kennedy. It was a liberal commission. Some of Oh, you see what she said? Now, she's not even talking about the communists yet. She's talking about the, the commission, the so-called Warren Commission that was used to investigate the death of President Kennedy. As I've already stated, it was headed by Earl Warren, who was the lead, who was the chief justice of, of uh, the Supreme Court. And as I stated, he, he was in charge of many liberal uh, reforms, particularly Brown versus the Board of Education, which, which, was, which served to integrate the public school system of the United States. All right, and as I stated, he was the uh, he was voted to be the chief mason in California back in I think 1935 or 1940. But you brothers could look that up. Uh, calm simps, and uh, I'm sure the report was wrong. It had nothing to do with the cause that they said, and the cause of it all was communist. Uh, dominated this the riots in this country are absolutely communist inspired and communist dominated in fact uh when i was a member of the communist party the communists ordered me to incite other my people to riot hmm anyway uh, nothing that this woman is saying is surprising me at all um let me also say this in regards to um to bayard rustin and this is why I constantly keep reiterating about how deep the rabbit hole is when you deal with these exalted figures. Bayard Rustin, he came from a very affluent background. I just want to bring this out before it escapes my mind. And as a child, and Bayard Rustin, as I've already noted, is a pansexual. He was arrested numerous times for having sex with white prostitutes, out in, white male prostitutes out in public. And uh, he also, Bayard Rustin as a child, knew W.E.B. Dubois. And many of you brothers are familiar with him. He was uh, one of the leaders of the NAACP. I believe he wrote a book, uh, I believe it's called The Soul of Black Folk, even though he himself was not a so-called black man. He, his father was a Caucasian man, and he also was a homosexual. All right, so who knows? Maybe he knew Beard Rustin 
even better than, than, than we know he knew him, which resulted in him, you know, delving into that life choice or that lifestyle. Who the hell knows? Point being is this. Um, when you're dealing with these people, everything is connected. And as I stated in the past, when it comes to the so-called civil rights movement, you have different factions who all know each other and they're all just battling for preeminence. By all, you know, by, by all accounts, the, the SCLC, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, which was headed by Martin Luther King, was just a bunch of niggas just looking to fuck everything moving and they were all just vying for attention. That's how uh, Jesse Jackson came into, into prominence. He linked up with a man named Don Rose. And I'll be doing a I'll do a video about Jesse Jackson later. But that's the, J Jesse Jackson linked up with a man named Don Rose who promised him that he would take over the leadership when Martin Luther King was done away with. That is why, once again, when you look at the balcony, once again, all the men who did not have ties on, they knew what was going to happen to Martin Luther King that day. All right. That was an organized hit. And I'll end the video with this before I forget. Um, once again, just keeping up with the theme of the rabbit hole. And how deep it goes. Remember I, I was mentioning how Martin, Martin Luther King's father, real name Michael King. They both real name Michael King. They both changed their name in 1935. Uh, there was an MK Ultra assassin named, named uh, Wayne Chenault. Uh, Marcus Wayne Chenault. And you brothers could look this man up. He was a little person. All right, quote unquote midget. A little black dude who came to the Ebenezer Baptist Church. I believe it was 1974 or 75. And um, he came there saying that he was tired of Christian preachers. And he was coming there to kill Martin Luther King's father. And he didn't get to kill the father, but he did kill the mother. He killed Martin Luther King's mother. And a lot of people don't know that. Like people, people just think when they think Martin Luther King, they think about him being assassinated. People don't know his mother was assassinated also in that church. By a man named Marcus Wayne Chenault. Look him up. His last name is spelled C-H-E-N-A-U-L-T. Okay. He was taken to prison. And during the trial, he was having outbursts at, during the trial. I'm trying to remember what he was saying, but I can't remember. He was just yelling stuff out. He was saying he was a Hebrew. He was, he was yelling out he, he's a Muslim. He hates, uh, he hates Christian preachers. He was there to kill Martin Luther King's father. And... They found a list in his pocket of people that he was going to kill. And one of the names on the list was Aretha Franklin. So, you know, he was an MK. He's, he's, what, he's what you call MK Delta program. The MK Delta program is the assassination programming. OK, that's why you have in the military what's known as Delta Force. All right. Or you have CIA uh, operatives like they make movies about like Jason Bourne. That's that's a that's an example of an MK Delta programmed assassin. All right, so that's this little dude, Marcus Wayne Chenault, he was sent out there to kill Martin Luther King's father. And he just ended up killing the mother and he killed somebody else also while he was there. Martin Luther King's father walked into the church and calmed him down and asked him why he did it. And I personally believe that Martin Luther King Sr. was plugged in. And, and he must have known at least a little something about what's going on. Now, Martin Luther King had a brother. When I say Martin Luther King, I'm talking about Jr. He had a brother named um what's his cat name start with an a i think it was alfred or albert this man allegedly drowned in the pool a year after martin luther king died he drowned in the pool in 1969 on june 21st the summer solstice all right so they claim how could he have drowned in the pool he was an expert swimmer all right this is what now martin luther king he had, he had a brother a younger brother. I think he was younger than him by one year. Uh, his name was was uh, Alfred, Alfred or Albert. One of them. One of them two. Start with an A. Your brothers could look it up. Anyway, um, Albert, he did not want to follow into the the family business of being a preacher. You know, he he had a different personality, but eventually he seemed to have been coerced or forced into it. Anyway, just to follow along in the theme of the mysterious deaths of the kings. One year after Martin Luther King was killed in 1969, Albert King was found floating in a pool on the on June 21st, which is the summer solstice. Uh, his family to this day claims to not know how he could have drowned when he was a great swimmer. Uh, it's, it's my belief that the Kings were marked for termination because they they were just 
they were just too messy. And the, the uh, powers that be in the United States, they just could not afford to have them around anymore. Okay? Their, their usefulness was, was at an end. But go ahead and look it up. You know, once again, people are under this misconception that Martin Luther King is, is you know, he was assassinated and that was that. Other hits were, you know, other hits were, were committed on other family members. I do believe that his brother's death was a hit. It was, and it was based a lot in, it's also based in Luciferianism. Whenever you see deaths of notable figures on the summer solstice or the winter solstice or the equinoxes, that's always sacrifice, particularly when you're involving water. Okay? But that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to bring some of that information out for you brothers. Y'all could look it up yourself. Look up Marcus Wayne Chenault, man. He had that wide-eyed look that you see from a lot of the mind control programmed assassins. All right? You see the same look in the, um, in the guy who, who was involved in the murders over there at Sandy Hook, etc. But anyway, peace.